I'm back with Susan Goodkind Weidman. And uh, if you were lucky enough to listen to our part one, uh, you know that Susan is uh, kind of a, a Renaissance woman. I mean, <laughs> she uh, she's worked in marketing and then she decided to become an elder uh, care attorney. And then she now is going to be coaching these elder uh, law attorneys. And uh, she is also coaching men and women on uh, who are uh, any kind of an attorney on how to live a, a better and happier life. So welcome back, Susan. And uh, let's talk about how you stay active and healthy, uh, mm -hmm. both physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Tell us about your routine. Okay. Um, I am very fortunate. My mother was a Renaissance woman. I love that you said that. She set the tone and the inspiration for me from being when I was a child. I have always exercised. Um, I try to do something every single day. Today was a, it rained in Port here last night, and it, I, there was a limit amount I could do. But I got out this morning with Walter, and we walked for three miles. Um, so I try to do something. I walk, I bike, I ski, I hike, something every day. And three days a week, I actually do something with weights. So I go belong to a gym. Two days a week, I go and I have a, a little routine that I've worked out for myself. I used to have a trainer. I don't feel like I need that anymore. And the third day, I might be working out at home or I might go back to the gym. So that's kind of my physical fitness. I'm a, I'm a little obsessed about it. I, I just It's just a routine, like brushing my teeth. I love that because I'm the yeah. same way. I, I, I've had to adjust, you know, as I've aged. Uh, but I still do it, and I'm still probably more active than people have my age. So we're, yes. we're good on that. Okay, and where yeah. do you go from there? So um, my diet, this is so interesting to me, and I, I, I am not a perfect person, and I don't want anyone to think I'm even trying to sound like I am. But for whatever reason, my weight has stabilized. And maybe it's because I'm a happier person. Maybe it's because I've, I've always eaten healthy. Not that I don't eat junk, but the primary way I eat is a healthy way. You know, I eat in, in moderate portions. I stay away from sugar. Um, I stay away from things that are just not, I know my body. I mean, at 62 years old, you know what works and what doesn't work. At least that's what I feel. And, um, you know, I just, I don't have a weight problem. I'm at the weight I want to be. I'm not going to say I'm thin and I'm not going to say I'm heavy. I'm exactly where I want to be. And it's, it's, it's just the way I live. You know, I drink a little bit. I'll go out with friends and have some wine. I just don't overdo it on anything. Um, you know, I just kind of eat what I want and I eat in moderate portions and I eat healthy foods. You know, I don't eat a lot of packaged or processed foods. So that's diet. I mean, and that sounds great. I mean, and that's exactly what you should do. I don't think you should starve yourself. I don't think you should overdo anything. And the fact that you know your body, you know how it reacts, you know what it likes, you know what it doesn't like. I mean, that's that's half the battle right there. Yeah, yeah. I think it really is. I mean, I know, you know, for some people, maybe eating lots of, I don't know, dairy is a bad thing doesn't seem to be my problem so I don't overindulge but I do eat it but I do know if I start getting into the crackers and the chips and things there's going to be a problem so uh -huh. I kind of you know I restrict myself in that area so that's diet um my mental health is super important to me to take care of myself that way because when I was at the end of my law career and I was burned out I had a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression it was just I went really deep down into a bad, a bad place mentally. And I came out of that by, I actually did see a therapist and we did cognitive behavioral therapy, which I think is awesome, was the right thing for me. And I am a student of life. I am constantly listening to podcasts, reading books, talking to people about how to be the best person that I can be and have a, a life worth living. That's kind of my theme, how to have a life worth living. So I'm a student every day. I'm learning. I'm listening. I'm taking in what's good for me, what's not good for me, and how can I be better? And spiritually? Spiritually is very interesting. I'm going to try to make it brief. But my husband died nine years ago from cancer. Prior to that, I did, I was, I, in my whole life, I was Jewish. And um, when he passed away, I kind of had a little battle with, with God and said goodbye you know this I don't like what you did here and I don't believe in you and anyway I 
just walked away from religion for about nine years. And then when I got to this place where I had to come back from that dark depression and anxiety, I rediscovered God. And so I have a personal practice. It's not, doesn't fit into any category. I'm not going to say I'm practicing Judaism or Christianity or Buddhism. I have my own way of connecting with God on a regular basis and uh, asking for his help and guidance. Well, that's wonderful. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that I think, um, well, many young people today are exploring the same thing. But I know when I was young, you did what you were supposed to do. Yes. And I think as you age, um, you, you explore more and you are open to more. And as long as you have some kind of source, whatever that is, yeah. uh, and you live a very uh, good life, like you talk about, mm-hmm. and you, you follow, you know, your ethical and your moral, I think whatever you do is great. And so uh, I think that's becoming more and more popular, and I think that's happening more and more. So would you say, what event really changed your life the most? Was it the death of your husband? Was it uh, deciding to go into law? Was it deciding to sell your practice? What was the life event that changed you the most? Well, those are all, you hit the high points. I guess I have to say it was the death of my husband. Um, You know, we had a child who was 10 years old when my husband got cancer. I never saw this coming. I had no idea of how it was going to play out. Um, it It was life changing. It was very sad. It was very hard to watch somebody you love die. Um, The whole medical being in that world and dealing with all of that. I never in a million years thought I would be a widow. You know, I mean, I wasn't, I was 52. I mean, I wasn't, you know, 22, but never, never imagined that I was going to be a widow and raise a child by myself and have to be so supporting for myself. I mean, that, so I guess that all did change my life in a big way. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I lost my husband 11 years ago. In fact, yeah. And, um, I, I can't say it was unexpected. He was not a good boy. He was a terrific husband and father and man, but you know, men are not the best when it comes to taking care of themselves. And so, you know, uh, he didn't do what he was supposed to do all the time and that's what did him in. But, uh, you know, I also was so independent because I had my own business and I had my business when we got married. Uh, and, um, you know, my kids were all adult. So, um, we were married for 45 years. So Mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was a different situation. And yet Mm -hmm. I still miss them every day. Mm -hmm. And I know what you're going through because I'm now going through my fourth case of breast cancer. So I'm fighting well, uh, but you know, I'm never giving up. So, um, the whole point I think is, uh, you know, really, uh, being who you are in the present moment being present every day, being aware of where you are and who you are and so forth. Now, one of the things that you say, I think you say you love it. I don't love it, but uh, (laughs) which is why I moved away from the north. You say you get lots of snow where you are. And I know that you do because I gave an example (laughs) when I was up there. Um, Does that limit you at all? Or does that just uh, intrigue and invite you to do the sport that you love? When it is within our control, I do love to get outside. I do love to enjoy it. I love to play. Last winter, like a lot of places, we had a winter to, the snow was as high as the roof of my house. And it was almost frightening how much snow there was. And it did get to be a little bit of a problem. Um, But there's always resources. I mean, you know, I had to hire people to come shovel the roof of my house. I hired people to come help dig out all over the place. Um, I have a lot of good equipment myself, but this was beyond, beyond what one person could manage. And we were all in the same boat. Everybody was the same way. So that became a bit of a limitation. And like you, I do, I'm traveling a lot now. My new jobs get me, you know, out the door a lot. And I'm a little concerned about how this is going to play out flying out of here in the winter, because I know it's not easy. But you know what? I'm just going to see. I'm going to I'm going to try. I'm going to do it. I'll find a way, you know. Interesting. The other thing that I think might be great for our listeners to to hear, even if maybe their kids are out of the house, but maybe <laughs> advice for their own kids 
Uh, what was it like? How did you handle uh, raising a child of 10 by yourself? That's a great question. And really by myself, because not only was my husband not here, but we have no relatives here. I mean, my, my closest relative is six and a half hours away in Chicago, and he's quite a bit older than me. So we had no family here. And it really was through the grace of my friends and the people in this community, which is one of the things I love about living in a smaller community, that people helped me. People stepped up. And, you know, I didn't want help at first because I am independent like you. You know, I can do anything, or at least I thought I could. And I finally opened that door and said, yeah, I'll accept the help. And, woof, you know, it, that's the way it was. He's a wonderful person, you know, my child. Um, he's had some rough situations, rough things for a kid. But we both use those as learning. How can we learn from this? Where do we go with this? We supported each other. It's been a lot of growth. Um, and I guess I'm blessed that he went the right way with it. You know, I guess some kids could have really gone into a dark place with it. He did not. He, he learned from it. He lets his father be an inspiration to him. I wrote him a little book after his dad passed away. I put together a book for him of pictures and words and things that his dad had said for him. And I actually interviewed my husband before he died about his wishes for my son. And I put all that in the book too. And so it hasn't been easy. I'm not going to say it's been easy, but it's, it was, it, we did it and we've done well. Well, and I think that's, uh, that's an important thing for our listeners to, to hear is the fact that nobody lives a perfect life. Everybody has stuff and, you know, your child is going to experiment. Your child is going to get into trouble. Your child right. is going to do a misstep here and there, but you have to love them no matter what. And you have to work with them and get them help and, and guide them. Yeah. And, and hopefully they do come out the other end. Okay. And yeah. I think that that's part of uh, being a parent. I mean, uh, there's not a glorified life for anybody. So what is your advice for creating a good kind of life? I love that. You know, that's, you. that's your name. You. And uh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I, you know, this is my opinion. Obviously, people do things different ways. I think it starts inside of you. I think you need to figure out what your values are and use that as a foundation for growing and developing yourself. And, and so that when you are lost or when you are stuck or when you're faced with something that you don't know what to do, you go back to your values and you say, does this resonate with my values? How does this resonate with my values? Can I make it resonate with my values? That's been critical in my taking care of myself. Um, and I think you have to recognize that change is difficult for everybody. It's been difficult for me, but in general, change usually leads to growth. And, and taking chances, I guess, what's the worst thing that could happen? If it's really, really bad, then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. But just because it feels uncomfortable or creates some problems or is difficult doesn't mean it's not worth doing. You know, that's some of my advice. Yeah, you know, uh, they say that uh, there's two questions you should always ask yourself. What's the worst that can happen? And what's the best that can happen? Yes. And yeah, can you live with the worst? <laughs> <laughs> and if the answer is yes, then you go ahead and you, you do it, you know. So um, it's, it's really uh, interesting how, how that all works. And it's not, yeah. it's not easy. I mean, there are some people really who've never budged from where they were born and what they've done. But, of course, I think uh, business and society is making people change. I mean, it used to be that you worked for the same company for 30 years. Now, sometimes that company doesn't last for 30 years. Yes. If the company merges, um, you might be out the door. Um, uh, things are continually changing. In fact, I just spent time with, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Walter O'Brien. He's known mm -hmm. as Scorpion, and mm -hmm. he's supposed to be the smartest man in the world. And he was outlining for us. I just spent the weekend not with him, but here listening to him and actually had lunch with him. And uh, he was talking about all these changes that are coming that we don't even see. I mean, there's not going to be the need for parking garages. There's not going to be the need for um, 
all these drivers. There's not going to be a need. I mean, just because of what's happening in uh, how we're developing products and what we're doing and how we're leading our lives, there's so many things that are, are going to change right. that we're not anticipating and it's going to shake us up. And it's it's going to you know it's going to make uh, uh, you know us have to I mean I, I think of the steel workers in in uh, uh, Pennsylvania who who well my father was a steel worker my grandfather was a steel worker well uh, so that doesn't mean you have to be a steel worker you know right. so it's um, I think that's going to make everything a little more uh, changeable and I will say that the millennials, the younger people today, <laughs> are of a different mindset. They don't necessarily want to buy a home. Uh, they're very happy living in these, uh, of course, they're not having families yet, but they're happy listening, living in these uh, little tiny apartments, 300 mm -hmm. square feet, uh, as long as it's in the middle of everything. They don't need a car because they can walk everywhere or ride a bike or take a Lyft or Uber. And, um, you know, it's a whole different way yes. of living. And yep. uh, it's really it's really amazing. And even when they do get married and start a family, some of them are doing it in what are called tiny homes. Yes. So, you know, I just think it's amazing. So um, have you seen that in your son? Um, yes, I absolutely see that he is more about where he's going to be and the experiences he's going to have than accumulating things, having things, owning things. Absolutely. I think you're, you're, you nailed it on that one. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to go through all of the stuff that I've collected. And of course, having three homes, I have a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going through it and I'm thinking there's none or nobody that wants this stuff. Right. Why am I saving it? I mean, right. nobody wants to polish silver anymore. Nobody <laughs> wants to have good dishes anymore. Right. I mean, I used to have big, big uh, Thanksgiving dinners. I would have, you know, a lot of people over. It was my husband's favorite holiday. He loved Thanksgiving. Oh. And he loved to invite people. And he loved to have anybody who didn't have any place to go. And, and so we had, oh gosh, gorgeous dishes, gorgeous silver, gorgeous charger plates, gorgeous everything. And, and nobody wants it anymore. Yes, so, know. you know, when back, when I said to my, I said to my son, you know, I'm going through all this stuff. Is there anything you want? And I look at all the places I've spoken and been and the subjects I talked about. And I think, wow, I don't even remember all of this. And he said, Mom, the only thing I want is from your modeling days. And I said, you're kidding. Why? And he said, because that was the real Miami. And I want that stuff. So that's what I did. I put together that stuff. And, you know, uh, that's what he has. But uh, nobody <laughs> wants anything. And yet I look at it and I find it so hard, Susan, to throw away. I, I just say, oh, but I remember when I was there. And I don't want to throw it away. So... What was it like for you uh, moving to the Upper Peninsula and having to pack up your stuff and and so forth? And then and then you went from from Jersey to Grand Rapids, yeah. Grand Rapids to the UP. So each time was a, a kind of a stroll through the memory banks. You know, and I I moved to Grand Rapids. I mean, that was such an ex exciting and wonderful adventure. And I didn't have a lot at that point. I was living in a one-room studio in New York City when I moved to Grand Rapids. So that was no big deal. Then Grand Rapids to the UP, you know, my husband and I did it together. It was an adventure. So it was still, we just, you know, packed it all up and moved up here. But then when I ended up on my own and I've got a house full of his parents' stuff, because his parents are gone, my parents' stuff, you know, my parents are gone. I mean, I've got, well, here's a great story. So I've got all this stuff and it's in the basement. And I'm thinking, I've got to keep all this because Eric's got to learn. See, so you're lucky. Nice. You've got a basement in Florida. There are no basements. Well, so I have to have, I have to rent a storage <laughs> unit. So I've got a storage unit in uh, Miami. I've got a storage unit in Palm Springs. And I'm paying big bucks for those. And I'll probably, I don't even know what's there. Well, I think there was a something, I had an intervention of sorts. So I have all this stuff in the basement and I know Eric doesn't really want it. That's my son, but yet it's, it's our history. It's our heritage. Well, guess what? We had a flood in the basement. 
a big flood in the basement and I had to throw everything out. Mm. So, uh, you know, some things are still there, but, but I don't have the volume of what I was collecting anymore because it got destroyed by a flood that my, my basement flooded. So, um, I, I'm, I'm a minimalist now. I don't have as much stuff. I don't have as many tchotchkes and things like that. And I'm okay with that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about <laughs> what, what have we not talked about? What have we not talked okay. about that you would like to? Sure. Because we've I got, got about five minutes left, okay. and I want to make sure we get everything in. Before yeah. we do anything, how can people get in touch with you? Okay. okay. My yeah. handle is Good Kind of Life, and it runs together for Facebook. Or I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I just started a website, Be Kind. I'm just getting going with it. Um, but it's everything is Good Kind of Life, G-O-O-D-K-I-N-D-O-F-L-I-F-E. And so it's Instagram, Facebook, my website, and I'm on LinkedIn too, but that's not really a place that people are maybe using my services. It's more for me to learn. Um, anyway, what I want to add, and I really appreciate you asking me this, um, anxiety and depression. I have dealt with it many times in my life. Um, it's not something that generally goes away on its own. And I guess I would urge people who feel that they're dealing with those kinds of problems to get help. Um, it's, it's a tough battle. It's a tough battle to do on your own. There's lots of good resources out there to get help. And it can make a huge difference in your ability to just have a better life once you learn how to manage those things. You may not make it go away. I still have days where I wake up with anxiety, but I'm able to manage it because I've developed and learned the skills of how to explore my anxiety, explore my depression, and you know, and, and find my way out of it. So those are super important to me, those issues. And, um, I hope that other people will take that seriously. There's nothing to be afraid, nothing to be ashamed of. Anxiety and depression are not shameful things. They are just things that happen that you have to deal with, just like being happy, being sad, being angry. They're just other parts of being a human being. Fantastic. Well, folks, you've had, um, a good session with Susan. Hopefully you'll be in touch with her. If you want to find her on Facebook, it's at Good Kind of Life. Uh, on Instagram, Good Kind of Life. On LinkedIn, Good Kind of Life. Um, and so if you want to be in touch with her, that's one of the ways you can do that. And um, wow, this has been absolutely yeah. fantastic, Susan. I hope that you will uh, continue to do all the good things that you are doing. And uh, Thank you. Uh, you know, you're a very valuable resource and I think people need to know you and love you. And, uh, I wish you only the best with, uh, uh your new venture, which I think is fantastic. I mean, Thank I you think very it would, much, I think it would be an honor to be coached by you. You've got a lot of oh, life experience <laughs> and, uh, I think that, uh, I really think that people would, uh, will benefit from this. And so, you lawyers out there, you know, uh, you elder <laughs> care people, you know, uh, pay attention to what she has to say. She's got lots of knowledge. She knows what needs to be done. And for those of you who are simply in another profession of legal uh, work, uh, there she is for you. She's there to help you in any way that she can. So thanks so much for being with us, Susan. Uh, love you. having you and uh, the best wishes. Thank you. And I wish the same to you, too.